In this video, I'm going to be showing all of the steps involved in removing both of these seat covers and what materials and details you need to have and know to properly install the new seat covers and make them look awesome. Stick around to the end or skip through if needed to the part of the process you need to know to finish your project. Don't forget to check out my description for links to tools and materials used in this video. I do feel that having the right tools for the job makes the job a lot easier. If you do use the links in my description, it does help support my channel and enables me to continue creating valuable content for you. Your support is greatly appreciated. In order to be sure you get the right bolster height, measure the front bolster like this and send it in with your order. All right guys, hey, today uh, we're gonna start on doing a seat cover install. Uh, this is actually uh, pretty much a seat cover that had been previously put on by somebody else. So I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about what you need to look out for when you're starting to do a seat cover. If you can see that there's actually puddles of water uh, pretty much from rain getting into the seat or into the seat foam, these little puddles at the, uh, at the very ends where, where water is draining out of it, you kind of got to make sure that once the, once the seat cover is off, that you actually uh, get, the, get the foam as dry as possible. Otherwise, it's going to cause... Um, you know, mold and that kind of stuff underneath or in the in the foam. So, so this is what you got to do. You just kind of got to look the look the seat over. You got to feel for any uh, any moisture in the uh, uh, in the foam. Uh, you kind of just got to get the all the staples out to get the uh, get the old seat cover off. So this is kind of a, I, I would say if anything, I'd say this is a little bit of a sloppy job. I mean, it's it's somewhat neat, but I, I'd say it's a it's a sloppy cut job. Um, Staples are pretty well, pretty well buried. Uh, there's some issues with uh, some of them pulling through right here. Um, just a little something there, but uh, but once you kind of look it down, it's uh, there's some rough, you know, extra staples kind of thrown in there. They really shouldn't be put in at that kind of an angle. Uh, some of them that aren't buried all the way. Stuff like this. That's that one right there. Where it actually, uh, you know, sometimes you'll run into it with the fabric is actually pretty thin. It'll go through and you can kind of run into stuff like that where it actually shot, you know, shot all the way through and left a, you know, staple hole. So uh, that's the kind of stuff you got to look out for. Um, there's eh, pretty much a few of them like these right here. There's kind of like three of them right in place right there. Uh, you really uh, get a get an idea about there's several different things that are just not right. You really don't want to be stapling a uh, a grab handle on with the, you know, pretty much using staples. You don't want to be using staples. There's actually supposed to be a rivet through that. So I'm not quite sure what happened with that. Um, but we're going to be getting rid of the uh, the grab straps. And if they want to put it back on, maybe we might put it back on later. Uh, but we're going to get started. So this is uh, really just uh, an idea about what it looks like to begin with. Um, you kind of saw the, saw the front of it, how it's pretty much split. Get an idea about how it looks. Split right there, all the way through. Split at the front, all the way through where the foam is exposed. This was out in the rain today, so it did get wet, so it's going to have to be dried. But it gives you an idea of what we're starting with. These are the before pictures that I like to take to use for reference to help when installing the new seat cover and getting the staples in the same locations as the factory installed them. Since this was not a factory installed seat cover, this step may not be as important. But it is good to have pictures like this so you can compare your work to what you're correcting. All right, guys, we're back. So uh, we're here in the uh, poultry shop today. I call it the poultry shop. Uh, this is where I do all the uh, media blasting and uh, wood shop, work, workshop, poultry, etc. So I want to show you some of the main tools I like to use for uh, getting staples out. This is actually a uh, professional poultry tool uh, for staple remover. My problem is, is it doesn't always get, uh, it kind of digs into the fabric pretty uh, pretty harshly with these points on it. Uh, you can use a regular run of the mill screwdriver like this, but it doesn't always pull, it up, pull out the staples either. Uh, and then there's another one of these like this. This is pretty much about the same thing. So what happens is that you can get um, pretty much most of the staple up. It'll pull up one side. It doesn't always come out all the way. Uh, so then on top of that, you actually have to use a, uh, a pair of wire cutters to grab it. And pull and pull the end. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how we uh, how we kind of get started. There's a lot of uh, extra staples in here than probably should be, but the more staples the better. So I don't really I'm not bashing the person's uh, quality of work. There's probably more staples than there should be in here, but uh, in different angles, not really quite 
I like to have them straight across like this. It looks a lot more neat. Uh, but this is what we're going to do. So we're going to show you all three of these, kind of how they work. Um, pretty much uh, just got to pick a point, start going. Have a little place to put your staples. This is staples. Actually, they shouldn't be, uh, technically aren't, aren't supposed to be that long. They're only supposed to be quarter inch. Those are a little bit longer than they're supposed to be. Um, so this is the strap that was installed. I have about uh, as many staples as they can possibly put in that. So when you're rusty, so I don't know, that's going to be the best one I've ever had anybody staple a uh, staple one of these straps on. So I have to figure out why this is staple and what's the best way to get it off. at a time. So these are, uh, there you go. Let's try to get, trying to be a part of this. See, all the staples are together. Obviously, if you're going through the uh, grab handle and the uh, and the seat cover and into the, uh, the base, you're going to have need to have a longer staple for that, but you don't really need any more than a quarter inch long staple uh, for the uh, regular staples. So this is a screwdriver method that actually did get it all the way out. Um, just kind of dig it in on the corner of the screwdriver and get it underneath it. And grab it in the middle, pull it with your finger, and you can pull it out. As you can see, this is a long, lengthy process. <laughs> so uh, we'll start on one corner and uh, eventually you're done. All right, guys, I'm going to give you an idea about what I'm working with here. Uh, obviously, as I was showing you before on the other side, uh, this thing, this this grab handle or grab strap, uh, technically supposed to be installed with a uh, with a rivet uh, straight in here, uh, pretty much straight through the body of the uh, of the seat. Typically, there's a metal washer on the other side to keep it from collapsing or damaging the plastic, but there's a rivet that normally holds that in. So somebody putting that many staples in was just absolutely ridiculous. So this is what, hopefully if I don't tilt this too much, you'll get an idea about how, how much of a pain this is trying to get trying to get all these staples out. So you kind of just start, pretty much it doesn't matter about the old cover, but uh, you don't want to scratch up the, uh, the body of the seat that much by skipping over. So sometimes these, that, that particular, this particular tool is rather sharp. It's not really the, uh, it works really well to get under the staple, but there are other options. So these two options here. So uh, a lot of times you can't get always get it out with a flat blade screwdriver and get it all the way out, but you can put it under it and pull it out just like that with your finger. So, and sometimes you can kind of grab, grab it like this. Uh, if you can't get it all the way out, you can do it like that. But, so... Uh, you got to get under one corner of it, lift it, just like that. Put your finger over it and then pull it out and you can grab it with your whole finger there and get it all the way out. But it's just a, it's a long, tedious process. So just kind of got to, this is so you can get an idea about how this, how this works best. But there's not really a, an awesome method for it. It's just a matter of just taking time and getting it done. So this is absolutely rather ridiculous. Got like, a, I think there's, let's see, probably 20 staples on this one strap. Like you really wanted to make sure that was gonna stay on. <laughs> so, yeah, there's two, two together, almost like a double tap. So if you can't get it all the way out with one, you kind of grab it with a, wire snips and just kind of pull on it and you can pull it the rest of the way out. The wire snips actually allow it to bite, but you don't want to bite it so hard that it actually snips snips it off. So when you're going to put staples in, it's ideal to try to find a good a good flat spot. Because when you go in at an angle, it always misses. It doesn't bury it all the way. So try to make sure it's nice, you know, uniform flat spot. So that the staple will go in on both sides. That's uh, my suggestion. But I just wanted to give you an idea, get you a little bit more of a close up here so you can see 
what it takes to get a get under them with the different types of tools. That's using a screwdriver. I'll try the other one. So the other one is this one, which is also just a standard run of mill staple remover too. So you kind of get under it just like that. That one actually works pretty well too. Get under it just like that. Pull it. So they all work pretty well. Some of them are a little bit less uh, scratch, uh, scratch, uh, scratch resistant than others. Like these right here, a screwdriver, and this one is actually a little bit, uh, a little bit less uh, aggressive when it comes to screwing up the uh, plastic underneath. So there we go. All right, well that's a little idea about how the uh, how the staples are pulled. All right, guys, we're back uh, here, kind of in between. Uh, I just wanted to give you like a a little intermediate uh, look at how this uh, this kind of job comes together. Uh, this is really only a little more than halfway uh, disassembled. This is a uh, staples coming off the edge. You kind of got to just uh, pay attention to where the staples were originally installed pretty much along the along here because when you go put them back in you'll be able to feel them but you really just want to know where they originally installed. This is actually an aftermarket uh, cover so this had already had one put on. So this is technically not going to show uh, where the factory staples were. I'm just kind of buried in with all the others. But just to give you an idea, this is still rather wet. This area is still rather wet, kind of up in here. So I'm going to let this sit. I do have a fan on right now, just kind of as it's uh, drying it out. But uh, I'm just going to let it sit overnight with it uh, kind of like standing up. That's the best way to like let water drain out of it. You'll know when it doesn't feel like 50 pounds, uh, you know, full of water, uh, that it's it's kind of nearly dry. Uh, but lifting the foam up a little bit and let a, letting it dry out underneath is also a very good idea uh, to try to get it as dry as possible before the new cover is put on. All right, well, like I said, this is kind of just uh, in between getting the old cover off. It looks like there's a slight little uh, repair down there that somebody put in just to try to probably... Uh, cover up a, a spot or maybe a little divot in the uh, in the foam or something so we're just gonna have to work with that uh, but there you go uh, we'll be back and uh, I'll show you when it's uh, completely removed or at least the old ones completely removed and we'll see uh, what all the foam really does look like coming up next all right guys here we are back uh, actually have the uh, seat cover finally off all the way um, you can kind of see uh, some of the edges there's normally felt uh, kind of along this edge uh, to keep the uh, cover from getting ripped on the edges. Uh, normally, uh, this is the best time to kind of clean up if you actually have a broken seat latch like this one was. Uh, it actually is riveted in right here. It uh, has metal washers on the other side to actually uh, allow it to get more strength from the inside for the rivet to grab because it actually takes, uh, I think it's quarter-inch rivets, uh, pretty, pretty big size quarter-inch rivets um, to put in there. So this is the best time to fix the uh, seat latch if there's any problems with the seat latch because when the seat latch is on, being riveted on, it makes it harder to uh, get to it because the seat cover will be obstructing getting the rivets out from the inside. So fixing the seat latch on this at the same time, this is actually a good time to clean up um, pretty much the edges, any of the edges here that uh, have a bunch of gunk and nasty stuff around. Make sure you get all of the, uh, uh, all the other staples out. Uh, I actually just pulled out every last single staple on this whole thing, which is a real pain. But you can kind of see anywhere where there's rust or stains or anything like that. You want to go over it with a maybe silicone spray or something. Don't make it too slippery because you don't want the cover to be that hard to put back on. But um, it does make it look a lot nicer when you're done. And when you go to put the new cover on, you don't want it getting dirty from all the stuff that's on the edges. So, like I said, this is a good time to clean all these edges up. So this is what it looks like, uh, pretty much with everything off. I'll uh, flip it over, show the other side too, so you can see uh, any other things you might need to see. That's next. All right, here's the top side of the uh, of the seat, pretty much with just the foam. Uh, there is a slight little split in here. Not really too much to be concerned about, uh, as long as it stays pretty much intact, it's not a big deal. I wouldn't go putting anything in that. Normally the seat cover actually has uh, pull-through uh, straps 
that actually go through this opening down here through to the other side. Same thing with back here. There's one that goes through back here. Oh, sorry. Goes through back here. And then this one actually has a Velcro, uh, recessed Velcro area down in here. Sometimes this strip will come out. Uh, I, I normally actually put double-sided, uh, or no, sorry, I put spray adhesive down in here to get this tack strip or this Velcro strip to go back in. So I actually did do that, peeled it up, put spray adhesive down in there uh, to get it to stick back in there a little bit more. So give you a better idea about the whole, the whole seat. So this is pretty much stripped all the way down. No staples, everything. And uh, this one, thank God, somebody didn't staple on top of another cover. So um, ended up uh, pulling every last little staple out. I personally don't like putting straps back on, uh, but I also normally when I order seat covers, I like to recommend to people you, to use the uh, traction top fabric, which is black traction top, so that when you sit on it, it keeps your, your body planted on the seat a little bit better. Um, if you need to put a strap back on, kind of have to plan ahead uh, to make sure that there's a, a rivet, you know, a spot in there or a reinforcement for the rivet to go in. But normally they're riveted on, so that's the best way. I don't recommend uh, putting stapling the strap on like this guy did using probably 20 to 30 staples to on each side for the strap. Uh, that's kind of really ridiculous. I prefer to go without a strap. It gives a nice, cleaner look. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's it for this. Next step is going to be uh, actually covering it. So when the seat covers come in, we'll be getting to that. We'll see you then. This is a little closer look at the bolster crease pull-through tabs that are at the front and rear bolster locations on this seat. There is a canvas extension at both locations with a plastic flip tab that needs to be pulled through the seat to help keep the bolster fabric snug in the corner. If you want to get the same seat covers or just a different color, check out my description for the links to where you can buy your new seat cover. Here are the new seat covers from Ritco Products for the 2011 Sea-Doo GTIs. They are twins. There are two of them. And this is what the seat cover looked like when I'm taking it out of the box. It's got a nice shade of orange. And the ski has pretty much white, orange, and black. So that is actually a carbon fiber carbon fiber kind of material white and the orange is a nice uh nice i guess you'd say a nice broad color of orange so uh but i think it's going to really brighten the ski up it's probably going to look better the sea cover is probably going to look better than the ski so we'll just have to see what that looks like when it's all said and done but here are the new sea covers out of the box about to turn it over and seal the stitches all right guys we're back uh, I wanted to show you another important uh, step that uh, we need to go through on these uh, seat covers. That is actually to uh, uh, seam, seal the seams and uh, try to make sure that any water that gets on the top of the seat cover doesn't creep through into the, into the foam cushion. So what I typically like to do is I like to actually uh, uh, seal, just go over, the, uh, go over the hole just as much as possible. It, it's just kind of like a secondary precaution. It just helps keep some of the water from getting through. So I'm going to get started. And if you just kind of watch, it's nothing crazy. Uh, this is just a step that I feel like I do. Maybe you don't really have to do it, but um, it's kind of an extra step that I feel, uh, I feel it could be very important uh, for long-term durability of the uh, seat cover and keeping the foam dry. So it does get pretty messy. And this, uh, this sealant actually is kind of Kind of been sitting around for a little bit, so it might be a little thicker than it is supposed to be, but just trying to get at least a, as much of the stuff in there as possible. Hopefully you get the idea about how important this step can be. The second thing it does is it helps to strengthen the stitches for when you pull the material pretty hard to get the wrinkles out. Once you're done with the stitch sealing, you just let it sit overnight. I also like to seal the logo stitches too. All right, guys, we're back here. I uh, just want to show you the uh, seat covers after getting the uh, seams sealed. Uh, pretty much went through uh, both seat covers. Uh, this is going to be a set of uh, 2011 C2 GTI uh, skis. And uh, I'm finishing the uh, 
seat covers up, installing the seat covers here shortly. Uh, but this just shows the uh, seams being sealed. This is pretty much going over the whole thing, as you can see, just to try to keep the uh, water from getting down into the, uh, into the foam area. And at this point, uh, these seats, uh, the foam has been pretty much dried out. It's climatized, I guess you'd call it. Uh, and the um, foam is, at this point, pretty much dry. So, yeah, I'll give you the best idea there. We're about to lay the seat cover on and show you how you get started. All right, guys, we're back. And now we're ready to get the seat cover on the seat. See how fancy and flashy this is. It's going to look gorgeous when it's done. So at the back here, we actually have um, we have some Velcro that goes on this area right here that actually sits in the uh, hook and loop section right here. And then we have a part that needs to be pulled through. But we also have a part up here that needs to be pulled through. So we kind of have to start here. Just kind of lay it out. And I'll likely have to going to have to put this one in first. So you're going to have to reach through, this piece has to be pulled through and then flipped just like that. So we're going to drop this in and start with that first. And then we're going to move to the back. This can be repositioned a little bit once it's all in there too. But So you go through, you pull that, just make sure it's flat and pulled through because you're not going to want to go back in there after. But that's that one in. So it gets that one set up and in there. Okay. Just kind of get it a little bit centered. And then you're going to get back here. And we're doing the same thing back here. And then we're going to drop the uh, Velcro pretty much in the spot. So this one just goes. Okay, so that's a uh, preliminary positioning of the seat. I'm just kind of center it. Kind of get it just like that. Okay. At this point, we're also going to just try to see how it see how it looks. So I'm gonna pull this over. A little heat will make it a uh, stretch a little bit better too, but you just kind of got to get it laid out, laid out as flat as you can get it to start and figure out where everything needs to be. All right, guys, let me show you what what you have to do on this one. This one actually uh, had pretty much just the right amount of fabric to reach to certain areas, and uh, especially right here. So this was kind of like the shortest spot. So you kind of got to look. Uh, you kind of got to lay out the fabric and make sure that it, uh, it, it fits this fits and has a little pull over every which way um, So what I normally do is I look for the shortest point and start kind of working from that and make sure that you can actually center the seat based on that So I actually uh, I already got these in uh, Because this was the shortest area everything else looked like it was going to cover as far as like having enough uh, fabric to cover uh, and so I actually put clamps just like this I'll pull the fabric. This was the second shortest area which was a uh, pretty much right in here was the shortest area to just wrap around and have enough uh, area to staple it's gonna have to have a, a heat gun used to kind of pull it and stretch it a little bit more but as you can see it's already starting to take its shape uh, the bolster is starting to take its shape so this is uh, this was the next shortest area there's kind of enough to wrap around there there's enough to wrap around there there's enough all the way back here to wrap around uh, and there's enough to wrap around up here if you actually get the front done so the front was the shortest area, and this was the second shortest area. Everything in the back pretty much had enough uh, fabric to cover. So that's kind of what you got to look for. You got to make sure that the uh, seat cover is placed properly, because sometimes they cut it just that way so that it'll actually uh, it'll actually fit uh, or fit the right way. Um, so uh, I pulled these around, put clamps on both sides, as you can see. Uh, pretty much have a clamp here, a clamp here. Uh, heat can still be used in this area to pull a little bit more out, which is what I'm going to do. 
Um, but at this point, I've got the front attached and I kind of have to mo start moving out from there. So um, that'll give you an idea. I'm going to start going a little bit closer uh, into getting some of the uh, short areas pulled around in the right place. And that's where I'm going next. So I'll, uh, I'll give you an update here again in the next, uh, uh, next chance. But as you can see, the bolts are starting to take its shape right here. Bolster's already kind of got its shape here. It's going to wrap around and pull there, and then the sides are going to pull this out. When you start pulling the sides out, it's going to pull uh, that looseness out right there. But this is already already pretty much snug down through here. And once you pull this way, it's going to pull the rest of this area you know, down, and it'll give it that, that full shape. So, all right, we're going to get a little further. All right, guys, here is a uh, update on the seat cover. Uh, still have to do the front area up here uh, but I've pretty much gotten the majority of the body all done here all the way to the back still have the little bit of the back to do as you can see there's a little bit of a ripple back there at the very back but this is what it's looking like so far so it's coming together all right guys uh seat number one is finished uh just going to give you an idea about uh what the staples look like i did use a tremendous amount of staples but i prefer to make sure that they uh that the seat covers stay completely intact so here's an example of the staples and the corners i normally fold the uh fold this portion of the corner in first and then fold one of the sides over try to make it uniform pretty much if you do this side do this do the uh, other side about the same way so they look uh, pretty similar but the inside i like to trim out the excess where it has a pretty uniform amount of leftover leftover material past the staples. So you can see, <laughs> this is where the material was rather short, and that's why I had to uh, pretty much put more staples in. When you get to the back, there's really not a whole lot of area to put any extra staples in, because there's just a little ridge. So you can see, trying not to go too fast here. That's that is the staple alignment. I'm gonna show you the top so you can get an idea. All the wrinkles are out, looks great. All right, here it is, and I think it turned out pretty dang awesome. <laughs> uh, the color's great, it's gonna probably be the nicest looking thing on the ski because uh, right now, ski's still pretty dirty and pretty nasty, but. Good job, Matt. Seat cover does look sweet. Colors are great. It's a good match, I think. Orange, white, and black. This is a 2011 Sea-Doo GTI colors. So, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I'll be finishing seat number two coming up next. Don't miss part number two of this video. I will have additional helpful upholstery tips in it. If you enjoyed this video or just found it helpful, please smash the like button. Subscribe to my channel to see more cool videos like this one, and don't forget to check out my description for further information about this video.